So I had a total, I think it was 24 scrubs to sell, but these are all the ones that I sold. And then I ended up with four, five, six, seven, eight, eight left that I didn't sell. I love the scrub, so I'm kind of glad I have some left, so I still have some to use and I don't need to make more yet. I am doing a million million times better. This is exactly what I needed was to close the business. And honestly, it was something I've been kind of thinking about like since I closed it last year. Like I kept telling myself, do I really need to open back up the business? Like I don't need the business. Like and honestly, like looking back at it all, I'm kind of really happy that there was something such as like my carpal tunnel that just pushed me to close the business because it was just what I needed. I just needed that push, that more of a reasoning other than just like me myself telling me to close the business. Almost knocked over my water, but it had a lid, so I don't know why I freaked out. But overall, like now that I don't feel so much stress, overall just, I feel so much better. I'm doing great overall. So I'm really, really happy I closed that business. The only thing I kind of feel like that's like floating around my head, which it, this is something that always is floating around my head, the views on my YouTube channel. <laughs> the views are just always so bad. Like. I don't know why my subscriber count is so high, but then I just don't get the views. But it's funny because I had the same mindset last year. I remember with the videos I was posting because every year, like around the time of the year, like around June, I like to go back and see what I posted. Like last June, I just always like to kind of compare myself from the year prior. And I'll go back and I'll see those videos and they'll have like 50,000, 100,000 views. And I'll be like, huh, I remember when I posted that video I thought it did horrible, but like, look at it now. So I think I just need to constantly remind myself, Tara, your videos just don't get a lot of views when you first post them. That's just something you need to expect. And over time, they'll get more views. It's just for some reason, the way my channel seems to be. And I mean, I think coming from anybody else as like a content creator, they would say that's bad. But I mean, I don't know. I'm still gaining subscribers like I don't I don't know like and like when you post a video YouTube ranks it from 1 to 10 and it's like always ranking like lower and lower every single week than like prior videos and I'm just like that is so bad. So I don't know that's just always in my head I'll just get like so many requests to do a certain type of video and I'll do that video and then it just doesn't do well So I don't know. I think I'm just like overthinking everything now Especially since I know like YouTube is like my thing my only thing now besides patreon which goes hand in hand with my YouTube. So I just think I feel like I'm really overthinking what I'm posting now. And I just like want every video to, you know, like be better than the last one. But I think in reality, that's not how it's going to work. And I think it is gonna take a minute to sort of just get back into the loop of like posting regularly on YouTube. Obviously I'm still posting regularly. It's just kind of gonna get hard to kind of like get into the rhythm, you know? It just seems like I used to not think so much about what I would post, I would kind of just like post. But now I'm kind of just like, okay, I want this video to do this many views, so it needs to be like this, it needs to do this, I need to say this at this part. I don't know, I think I just need to be, I just need to quit overthinking it. All right, so I do got some things we should unbox together. First off, this one came um, not in a box, so I can't really show it to you guys, because it has a shipping label on the other side. But, cake pans. And they're actually much smaller than I expected. Well, I guess that'll work. It'll just be a much smaller cake than I expected. Hopefully you guys actually like this idea I have. It's a video I have planned, product I want to make, and I need cake pans for it. Okay, this box was actually sent to me for free from a company. Actually, I need to get the coupon code they sent me. By the way, guys, go follow me on Instagram if you're not following me, at Skincare. I post 
all the time over there. But Morogue, Canada, they reached out to me on Instagram and they asked if they can send me some fragrance oils. And of course I said yes. If you're a company and you're watching, I'm always more than happy to take free stuff. Love it. So you can use the code Tara10 for 10% off your order. And make sure you use my code. That way they know I sent you. Otherwise, they're not going to think that I sent you. This is Moreau Canada. I'll have their website linked down below. But they sent me some free fragrance oils. Let's see what they sent me. I got a little note. Ooh, I got a thank you card. Hope you have fun creating with our fragrances. Thank you. They sent me six fragrance oils. So the first one is Bamboo Showers. Top notes is Bamboo Leaf. Middle is Iris Orchid Lily. Base is wood and musk. So I feel like this is going to be a pretty masculine scent. Yeah, it's definitely a masculine scent, but I really like it. The one we have peach and tea. It's top notes, fresh peach, middle, floral, base, tea. And I'm always a fan of peach. And I love how they're fully... Whoa. Whoa. I really like this. It smells like peach tea. It's really all I can describe. Like, I, I am a peach. I love peach, so I get, like, a lot of peach flavored things. I drink peach tea. That's good stuff. I like that. Lime leaf and dill. So top is fresh sliced lime, middle is dill and green figs and base is fern, cedarwood and musk. I don't think I would consider this masculine. I kind of feel like it would be like a neutral, like a very like, it can go very feminine or masculine. Interesting. It almost smells like a, like a drink I've had before. It smells really good. Next we got oak and whiskey. Top is sh sherry. I don't know what sherry is. Middle's whiskey, base is wood. Uh, wood. So this feels like it's gonna be another masculine scent. And I, uh, I like how they have. I didn't notice this till just now. On the bottle, it says like you can use this in shampoos between one to three percent, soaps one to three percent, candles four to ten percent, and lotion one percent. Yeah, and all of them have different percentage usage rates. I love how they're right in the bottle. That makes it really easy. This smells like a head shop to me. It smells very like an incense. It smells very comfortable. Yeah, if I, I, if I went to someone's house and it smelled like that, I feel like they'd be rich, but like the kind of rich where you feel super comfortable at their house. So like not too rich to where you feel like you're gonna like go around and break everything. I'm acting like I've been to like a rich person's house. <laughs> Anyways, okay. This one is coconut and eucalyptus and the top note is coconut middle eucalyptus. Base, mint, and sweet vanilla. I'm gonna like this. Oh yeah. This is unique, I like this. Coconut, coconut, eucalyptus, and vanilla are three of my favorite scents. I really, really, really like this one. Oh my gosh, I really like, I think this one might be my favorite. This one or the peach tea, I don't really know. I really like that one. Lastly, raspberry mojito. And I'm a big fan of mojitos. And the top is raspberry and lime. Ooh, good, it's got some lime. Fresh mint is middle. I love mint, peppermints. My cat just got the zoomies. I don't know if you heard her. And then the base is musk and rum, which is kind of feeling like it's gonna be a little masculine. Ooh, no. Whoa. This is really strong. You don't need a lot of it. Let me smell it from here. Mmm. I like this a lot. I wanna drink it though. Okay, I decided on the order of my favorites. First up, my favorite is the coconut and eucalyptus one. And then next is a peach and tea. And then the raspberry mojito. But I'm gonna be honest, those three were really hard to figure out which was my favorite. So could just depend on the day. And then lime leaf and dill. And then bamboo showers. And then lastly, the oak and whiskey. But that's not saying that these are bad scents at all. I'm just not the biggest fan of masculine scents, you know? I like to smell fruity, I like to smell girly, okay? Anyways, so the next box is from makingcosmetics.com and technically I didn't buy this myself. They actually credited me some money on my account and they told me to just get whatever I wanted. So here we are. Thank you so much, Making Cosmetics. So first off, you guys have probably already seen this ingredient. Don't even make me try to pronounce it. I'm just gonna call it silica since that's the first word but there are different types of silica so this is silica dimethyl ciliate I don't really know how to say it I use this in my duping tree hut scrubs and I have a lot of other products I want to make with this so 
You guys should go get some. I love this stuff. The only thing I hate about it is how airborne it is. Like this is so light, even though the bag is so big, it's only 75 grams and it just gets airborne super easily. Just like SCI, but it's actually even lighter than SCI and goes airborne even easier than SCI. So it's like, I love this ingredient and I love SCI. They're like two of my favorite ingredients, but yet I hate working with it. So there we go. Next up guys. All right. I have some things I need to say about this ingredient actually. So this ingredient is cocoa betaine. So for the longest time, I was somebody who did this. I called cocoa metoprobyl betaine cocoa betaine for short because one of the places I used to purchase my cocoa metoprobyl betaine from literally called it cocoa betaine for short. Um, obviously they were wrong. And later on, I just kind of like pieced everything together and realized it's not cocoa betaine for short. Just another case of like random misinformation that's out there on the internet that people can fall for. So this is a cocoa betaine, not cocoa metoprobyl betaine, but it is also an amphoteric surfactant because the betaines are amphoteric. So this can be used in like body washes, shampoos, bubble baths, cleansing lotions, creams, hand soaps, baby products, hair conditioners, cream rinses. So it's a surfactant that cleanses and lathers and I want to test it out. We got two more surfactants here. So I'm probably gonna butcher this, but it's coca metopropyl, we know that word, hydroxysolatane. Then we have a coca metopropyl amine, coca metopropyl amine oxide. I think that's how it's said. Just like this one, I didn't mention it, but they're both cleansing, they lather, they bubble up. And then lastly, this is another repurchase and this is glycerol oleate. So this can be added to oil slash emulsifier phase of your formulas. It's typically used anywhere between 0.5 to 3% and you can use it in surfactant systems, typically between 0.5 to 1%, which it'll still keep your shampoos clear and translucent, translucent. <laughs> so overall this can be used in creams, lotions, shampoos, shower gels, liquid soaps, and hair pomades. So what I use this product for is as a refatting agent in shampoos and body washes. And what that does is it essentially makes the product like more mild and it will also help increase like lather and foam. And overall just adds a more high end experience to your shampoos and body washes. So if you find like your body wash or shampoo to be like drying, or like stripping, try adding in a refatting agent like glycerol oleate. So another thing you could possibly use glycerol oleate for, and I learned this from the channel, the Institute of Personal Care Science, and it was in one of their videos regarding how to uh, get rid of soaping effects in lotion. And what that is, is sometimes when you use lotions and you rub it in, there's like a lot of white and it takes forever to rub it in. It's essentially the emulsifier soaping up. So just a little quick lesson here so these obviously are surfactants right that bubble and lather up right well emulsifiers are also surfactants they just don't like lather and bubble up the same way these types of surfactants do but they're both surfactants so that's why a lotion can have a soaping effect because it is a surfactant Surfactant is short for surface active agent. So think of surfactants as anything that has like an active on your skin that like when it comes in contact to your skin, it like activates and it does something. So cleansing surfactants and like emulsifiers. Hope that was informative. When you're making a lotion, you use emulsifiers to create your emulsion, to blend the oil and water together. And this is gonna be a quick little tangent. I don't wanna go too much into it, but most emulsifiers have some sort of HLB. I don't talk about this because it's kind of dated, but not really. Like it's still something I think you need to know eventually, but it's not something you need to know about in order to formulate. And you'll understand why as I explain. So emulsifiers have HLBs. Also, oils have HLBs. And the HLB number is used to calculate how stable an emulsion is going to be. So I don't know when, but back in the day sometime, people would have to use the HLB system to calculate if an emulsion, a lotion that they wanna make, will be stable. 
Nowadays, we have these all-in-one emulsifiers like Emulsifying Wax NF, Read Emuls SCG, Olivum 1000. These are all-in-one emulsifiers that we know if we use oil in there in between like I don't know, like one to 25%, we know the emulsion's not gonna fail. And if it does fail, it's typically from like the use of like a preservative like Optifin Plus or something like that. So overall, like we don't need to really understand the HLB system, but it is something you will end up coming across. Because when you see this being sold on Making Cosmetics, it says it's a low HLB emulsifier. So the emulsifiers that we're using in lotions are high HLB emulsifiers. Wait, real quick, here's the part where it's confusing. Read Emuls SCG actually doesn't have an HLB. So this is another reason why the HLB system is kind of dated. That's why I don't really explain the HLB system, especially since I don't really fully understand it. Like I wouldn't know how to calculate the HLB system to figure out if a oh, emulsion is stable enough. Like I would have to use like a calculator for that. So that's why I don't discuss it. Yeah, like I said, the em emulsifiers we use in emulsions such as body lotions, these are oil and water emulsions. It's when you're mixing a smaller amount of oil into water, oil and water emulsions, and we're using high HLB emulsifiers like emulsifying wax and F to create these. So since glycerol oleate is a low HLB emulsifier, this offers something different. And what the Institute of Personal Care Science was explaining is first off, if you get a soaping effect, you could do something as simple as like adding in dimethicone, that could help. Or even adding in like subtle alcohol, that can sometimes possibly help. But another thing that can also help with soaping effects is adding in a low HLB emulsifier. So I've never personally tried adding in a low HLB emulsifier to any of my emulsions before. If you deal with soaping effects in your lotions, try adding in a low HLB emulsifier. Glycerol oleate is one. Honestly, you can just go on like lotioncrafter.com, makingcosmetics.com, or formulator sample shop and type in low HLB in the search bar. And typically a lot of low HLB emulsifiers will pop up and you can go through those, see which ones you want to try. And you can add that into your emulsion and see if that helps with the soaping effect. That's what this ingredient does. Sorry for the long tangent. And that's everything for that order. But I want to try to get ahead on my YouTube videos so I can start reorganizing this entire workshop and let me know if you guys want me to vlog me organizing and cleaning the workshop because I think that'll be fun. All right, talk to you guys later. I'm